Hello everyone and welcome back to AMOS, our course on Agile methods and open source software. This is the first section of the third part where we will talk about where I will talk about software engineering processes in general. Next section will compare the key categories including Agile methods with the rest of them and the final section of this third part will provide a detailed overview of Scrum. So then when you look at software engineering in traditional terms, uh, you will be told or you have to learn about four different key functions that are usually allocated to roles who perform these functions. And since these skill sets needed to play these roles are so different, it's usually also very different people who pick up uh, these roles. The four key functions of traditional software engineering are product management, engineering management, software development, and quality assurance. And this lecture is structured along these traditional lines. The purpose of this is that we can, so that we learn to identify the practices or activities associated with each of these functional roles, but then see later on how Scrum mixes them up and combines them in, in a new way leading to new roles that combine different skill sets in one person from across these key functions. So when we talk about software engineering processes, we need a diagrammatic display, we need to show it. So we talk about roles in these in circles. Practices are these rectangular boxes and artifacts, the output of a person in a role performing a practice. The artifacts are viewed as documents here. So a product manager defines a feature which leads to the marketing requirement, which is part of the marketing requirements document. These key functions interact in any software development company usually. So uh, we have the product manager, the engineering manager and the quality assurance manager and the engineering manager and quality assurance manager often have a fair number of people working for them, which would be the software developers and the quality assurance engineers respectively. Product manager can also have people working for them, but usually it's much less than the headcount heavy engineering or quality assurance. And then again, these different uh, functions, key functions, have their own practices and activities, creating their own artifacts, documents as output. And you can see our notation here uh, illustrated across these three departments because usually product management is its own department, engineering consisting of engineering management and software development is its own department and quality assurance with a manager and engineers is yet another department. So let's take it in steps then. First up, product management. Product management is uh, the management of a company's uh, products uh, along a life cycle of these products. And usually if it's a larger company as part of a product portfolio, where there are multiple uh, products. And the management here is the management from the business perspective of making the product work for a market. You may already notice that in there is the idea that there's a product for a market. If you're a consulting firm, you are more likely to have a project management, often merged with engineering management, because then you are performing client-specific projects. The difference is that a project has a start date and an end date, while a product for a market is usually open-ended. So software vendors, also called product companies, are quite different from consulting companies. And we discussed this in our other courses, not so much here. I will use product in general for now. So the key question that a product manager has to answer or be able to answer all the time is what? What are we supposed to be doing? What should we be doing to have a successful product? On the heels of what follows in what order or what first. So there are lots of features usually that a product needs, 
but some at any given point in time are more important than others. Hence, you need to figure out how to order them, what's supposed to come first, what, what second, what third, and so forth. So that is the key question of product management. What are we supposed to do? The product manager, uh, this particular role, has is very communicative. The person has to be very communicative because you're pivotal. You are communicating with everyone. You're communicating to the sales and marketing side because your salespeople need to what need to know what they will be selling. The marketing people need to know what they should be marketing, and so forth. And on the other hand, the product manager has to communicate to engineering management what it is that needs to be done and then to quality assurance how to assess a good enough quality uh, when is it sufficient for the market for release. We have a wholly separate course on software product management. Let me keep it simple here. There are two forms of product management. One is called strategic and the other one is called technical or tactical. Strategic product management is responsible for identifying business opportunities and defining products that fit that business opportunity. So the business plan for a new idea is in the hands of a product manager, strategic product manager usually. The traditional term that you may still hear but that everyone from the trade will recognize for business plan uh, or for the requirements, the high-level requirements within a large company. Uh, it's called the Marketing Requirements Document, or MRD. The strategic product manager used to be, sometimes still is, responsible for the MRD, the business plan, basically. And then technical product management, uh, which focuses on the details, the nitty-gritty of turning that vision from the MRD into a specific real product. And so they have to detail the features, communicate them to engineering as they write down the details of the functionality that becomes the product requirements document, the PRD. And not surprisingly, a technical product manager is pretty close to the Scrum product owner and hence they are very similar. Scrum has no notion of a strategic product manager they only have a technical product manager also or the product owner, basically. And so there's a lot to learn. If you want to be a product manager, you have the high level strategic things like assessing a market opportunity and you have the technical, technical details of writing down a product specification. You have to communicate to the market an external product roadmap and internally an internal product roadmap and so forth. It's a comprehensive, quite challenging job that requires experience to be done right. When you look at these key outputs, key artifacts of uh, product management, uh, there is the MRD again for strategic product management. And this really is the business plan arguably of how you could earn money from a product if you only had it. It used to be lengthy documents. I don't think anyone, well, in some circumstances, you will still write these large documents, but usually uh, you don't set a slide deck or some other form. Because, as we will see, lengthy documents are really out of date quickly. Technical product management uh, writes the product requirements document, the PRD, so that's the functional specification, the technical non-functional specification, basically the whole product uh, package that you need to get to market in all its nitty-gritty glory. And that can be another complex document with lots and lots of detail. And sometimes you still have to write that in Scrum, obviously you write much shorter version in the form of a product backlog. So if you want to have an idea of how much fun it can be to be a product manager, having to uh, herd 
cats meaning different stakeholders i recommend you look up this video on youtube and enjoy 10 years from the movie uh, from a hollywood movie on how to design a tank and how to deal with conflicting requirements it's quite fun uh, so give it give it a try you can see the youtube link at the bottom of this page or get to it from the slides and i'll let you to it and return in a few seconds. So if you've watched it, you will see the various lessons of all the things that can go wrong or that are make product management hard. It's managing multiple stakeholders which may have conflicting interests. It's keeping those stakeholders away from the actual design process because, hey, did they not interfere with what the tank does. Uh, you need to be very clear about the market. They go from the US military to, uh, to uh, south of the border, uh, selling it abroad. The costs explode. Um, the features keep changing. That is one of the biggest ones, perhaps the so-called feature creep, where you lose focus and everyone just piles on more features, more functionality they want, turning your initial beautiful uh, essential design into just a hodgepodge of everything but the kitchen sink. Not a beauty at the end any longer. So next up is engineering management. Um, engineering management is concerned with the actual software development from a management perspective. So they hear or an engineering manager hears from a product manager what it is that needs to be done. Um, they then uh, turn around, look at the software developers and decide who and how and by when it gets done. So they plan, an engineering manager plans the work, assigns the work that derives from the feature requests of the product managers assigns them to developers. So key is always the question, okay, who gets to do that? Do we have the people and then of those who we have, who gets to do this and who gets to do that? And sometimes also they will try or can try to set a deadline, though of course given that work is barely compressible, this often doesn't work well. So it's managing people, leading them, assigning work to them. That's what an engineering manager does. And an engineering manager is also a communicative person because on the one hand, they talk to the product manager to understand what needs doing, and then they communicate with the software developers to communicate what needs to be done and break it down and assign it to people. At the same time, the engineering manager communicates with uh, quality assurance and with product support because those folks will receive the output of engineering. The quality assurance folks will have to test the software and the support engineers will have to support it in the market. So they need what's coming. They need to know the ins and out, the quirks, the bugs and all in all its glory. So. Uh, Engineering manager turns the overall roadmap into a release plan, allocates resources to different tasks, maybe delegates work to third parties or purchases libraries, and uh, may also perform retrospectives with the goal of improving efficiency. In software development, the engineering manager often manages the largest number of people, the software developers. So the software developers then perform software development, obviously. These software developers receive from an engineering manager in classic terms the tasks to be done, the jobs to be, the things to be programmed, and they know how to do that and they turn it into a well-working, hopefully, well-working well software. So they know how to do it. They can also provide feedback to an engineering manager and usually do so as to when they will be done, how fast they can do it. Because if it was up to the product manager, 
or the engineering manager, all work would be finished yesterday, right? So it's the software developers where the rubber meets the road, meaning the software developer has to do it. It's not just words any longer. And so many things can go wrong in software development that the feedback and the input of the software developer to by when and how fast you can actually get something done is quite essential for a reasonably well-working software development process. And in Scrum, as you already know, uh, it gets turned on its head anyway in that the engineering manager can't tell developers what to do, but rather they self-organize. Software developers are a bit more focused than engineering managers and product managers in the communication, but of course they are also social beings and have to communicate mostly with their superior, the engineering manager, but also with product managers and quality assurance engineers. In general, they mostly program, uh, they help with effort estimation, they help the engineering manager, uh, and that's it. So finally, we have quality assurance and quality assurance is the process of uh, making sure that the software under development has a defined quality where defined usually means good enough for its purpose. So the question that a quality assurance manager asks themselves or is asked by the engineering and product managers is is this software releasable in the sense of is it good enough for the intended purpose or will we shoot ourselves in the foot if we release that to the market? So the question is, is it releasable? And that of course depends on your definition of uh, quality. So I already implied it, good enough, uh, and you can kind of simplify this as conforms to stakeholders' expectations which maybe you will have to have to figure out in a feedback loop and can't write down beforehand. So it can be quite tricky to, under, to identify good enough. And of course, nothing beats human experience here. The expectations of stakeholders are, well, depend on the stake they have in the software or the perspective they do. The product manager is mostly concerned about are the requirements being met. The engineering manager is mostly concerned with is the quality there, is it evolvable, is it sustainable, or will everything break down in a few months uh, because we just pushed too fast, too hard. And support and operations will always uh, worry about how costly it is to operate something if it's cloud software. And how usable is it also implying how much hand-holding, how much resources do you need in hotline customer support. So they care about non-functional requirements as well. Quality assurance usually has a quality assurance manager who uh, puts different engineers, quality assurance engineers, onto different tasks. So like mirrors engineering management, usually not quite as many uh, people, but still can be substantial depending on the type of software and how much quality assurance you need to do. So um, a quality assurance engineer will write a lot of automated tests, perhaps uh, either as code component tests or as uh, scripts for UI. So maybe that's user interaction scripts or integration tests and so forth. They may uh, do manual tests because nothing beats the human brain still and their main goal or their main right is to sign off on the release. Usually an engineering manager will push for release because they are sure that they have high quality and the quality assurance manager will have to push back, which is why um, they may have a standoff or at least the superior to both of them, whether that's uh, uh, that, that maybe the CEO in a smaller company will want to listen to both of them and have them agree that the software can be released rather than just relying on the engineering manager who tends to be too optimistic or the quality assurance manager who tends to be too pessimistic. So um, here are two quiz questions that are fun 
I will ask them in class. So think about it and we will have some fun together when class time comes. So I talked about product management, engineering management, software development and quality assurance, which are the four key functions in traditional software engineering and how taken together they are used in software engineering processes. We will see how they can arranged differently, how the functions can be allocated to different roles in different ways in the upcoming sections of this third part of the course. And there we will see then how Scrum, how Agile methods compare with traditional ways of doing software development, most notably, most notably waterfall models. So until then, uh, enjoy. See you in a bit.